In general, I like to spend time with the anti-abortion movement in part because it's pretty clear to me what the pro-choice side believes. And these people have been waging a long war for the 41 years that abortion has been legal in the United States. And you could really argue that they're winning. I mean, they believe they're losing, but they have managed to stigmatize abortion. They have managed to pass untold laws. I think they're getting closer to their goal. Did you guys get a handout? Did you guys get one? We're standing here outside of Norman High School in Norman, Oklahoma. It's been quite a heated morning. Uh, Project Frontlines is kicking off today. That is an effort by Abolish Human Abortion. The kids have been really, really interested in talking to people. They have come right into the thick of these conversations. They have confronted them for their graphic images. Why are you showing that to you? Hey, get on the get on the internet and find me a study that that actually affects me. those kids probably watch walking dead those kids probably this is real though if you want the choice to have an abortion you should have the choice so i am if you not saying that if you get pregnant you, you have to have an abortion what i'm saying is that if you believe that you should for whatever reason it may be you should be able to have that choice the abolitionists of slavery that's in textbooks in high schools you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. i saw that and you showed school, that probably. to people back in the day guess what they were Mad at we don't uh, think that all pro-lifers have thought this through they're following leaders who have maybe but but when we if you ask the bold question who are you more sort of combative with yeah, pro-lifers. What do you think should happen to women who have abortions? Well, when it's made illegal, their death should be treated like the death of other people. So we want the, the laws for murder to apply to all people. We don't want the laws for murder to be biased and only applied to certain people, right? So just like African Americans back in the days of slavery, we want the laws of protection of humanity to be applied to all people equally. So women who have abortions should get life in prison or the death sure. penalty. I mean, I'm going to leave what happens to them up to the legislators, but in my opinion, yes. I mean, if, if a woman maliciously goes in and pays a hired assassin to rip the arms and legs off of her child, she should go to prison for that. Ivan Carmone, you're reporting there. What did, what did you learn? Well, I think every movement has its passionate soldiers who are trying to make the rest of the movement listen to them. The anti-abortion movement has made its peace with this sort of incremental strategy that we've been talking about, which is to say we want to make abortion clinics safer, we want to pretend we're talking about women's health when we're actually talking about shutting down clinics. These guys think it's not happening fast enough. They want to push the movement to be more zealous. They call themselves agitators, and they, in some cases, are having a lot of success. Yeah, and the question is, where do they fit in on the spectrum? If you look at the Gallup poll, which we can put up for viewers, what you see is a pretty consistent support for Roe. What you see is there, you have people basically saying, we don't want to overturn Roe by well over the majority and then pluralities with other views. Where does this fit into that? Because the groups you're studying do think they're losing, and that's one way they, they are, at least in public opinion, if not in the state house. Right. They use this phrase that they're dissenting from the culture of death. That's how they would put it. Um, I think they realize that the odds are stacked against them, and that's why they're going to high school students. They think that going to the abortion clinic is the final line, and going to the front lines is going to high school students. But unfortunately for the anti-abortion movement, one in three women will have an abortion. Women choose to have abortions for all kinds of reasons. Mm -hmm. And without stigmatizing that woman's decision, you're going to hit a wall if you're saying we want to end abortion. Right. You're hitting that wall of public opinion. David, you study these groups. Um, and this is an area, again, that we forget because of how polarized we hear about it in politics. We forget, to Rin's point, it's not actually that polarized in, pub in public opinion. I want to put up, when you ask women and men and minorities and white voters, what you see is that flat line of 50 percent or near there people being pro-choice and fewer being pro-life down in the low 40s. Um, this is one of the few areas in our politics where an issue that is divisive and discussed a lot in media, on the campaign trail, actually has 
a big diverse coalition. Right, it's a big diverse coalition that hasn't gotten smaller over the years. The uh, anti-choice movement has not succeeded in moving the needle. And in fact, if you look at the graphic you just showed, there's, um, it, it's not that there's 50% who are against abortion. It's a smaller group who actually want to ban right, abortion. Right, that's pro-choice. Right, and then pro-life is smaller than even smaller, to your point. want to actually outlaw it. People don't want to outlaw it. But the people who are profiled in this piece, they're part of a small extremist group who not only go to high schools and talk to to students, but they uh, protest doctors at their homes, they stalk clinic workers on their way to and from work, they picket people at their churches. Just this week, a clinic in Montana was vandalized, all its equipment destroyed by an anti-abortion extremist. I mean, these are people who will go to any means to try and stop abortion. Yeah, and, and Christina, briefly, your thoughts on abolition? Well, I can't roll my eyes because I'm sure my mom is watching, but I mean, this is absurd to even use that type of language, but I think I want to make two points before mm -hmm. we move forward. Um, one, we just also need to make sure that the, the concept of class isn't always given to poor women. There are several yep. upper middle class, black, white, mm -hmm. Latina, and Asian women who have had abortions, mm -hmm. and so I think oftentimes the argument gets stigmatized where it's, it's poor women that only get abortions, which we clearly know isn't the case. Um, and number two, I think, you know, when he was talking about this, this uh, he's against death. Right? Well, if we think about some of Martin Luther King's latter sort of more radical speeches, what he calls sort of uh, death is actually starving you know, American children mm. without providing them with not just nutrition, but the educational nutrition that they need. Mm. Right? So these are sort of the arguments that the GOP just yeah. completely ignore, but that's actually the fundamental American de democratic I, principle I, I that think, we should think about. I think that's well put, and you are talking, of course, about life. Mm -hmm. Life is, is one of the buzzwords here. I want to thank all of you. Uh, Elahe Izadi, a name I've been working on pronouncing. Irin Carmon, David Cohen, and Christina Greer. Really great discussion.